Welcome, welcome back all of you. This video is about physiology of equilibrium and this video is in the plane of ear and hearing. We already said that our ear is a dual function organ. Ear contains dual sensory apparatus and one part of the inner ear is dedicated to the process of hearing and the other part of the inner ear is dedicated to equilibrium process, the balance of our body. And the receptors and nerve connections for hearing is placed in the cochlear portion of the inner ear. This is the cochlear portion. While the receptors and apparatus to know our body position in relation to the three dimensional space are placed in the vestibular region. So this is the vestibular region of the inner ear. For a discussion on equilibrium physiology or physiology of balance, we should understand that there are two types of equilibrium. The first one is the static equilibrium and the second one is the dynamic equilibrium. Static equilibrium means it refers to, uh, to maintaining the position of our body, particularly the position of our head in relation to the force of gravity. So, head position and gravity. Right? That's tilting of our head, linear acceleration or deceleration or speeding up or slowing down, sideway movement or movement to front or back. Or if we are in an elevator or we are in a car, speeds up or slows down, etc. So, all these type of movements stimulate the receptors for static equilibrium. So that's all static equilibrium. While the dynamic equilibrium is also involved in maintaining the body position, but it is in response to rotational acceleration. So it is about rotation, rotation of our head. So this type of rotational acceleration or deceleration, rotational movements can stimulate the receptors for dynamic equilibrium. So there are two types of equilibrium. One is the static and second one is the dynamic. Now what we need to know is where these receptors are placed. Okay, These receptors for this static as well as this dynamic equilibrium is placed in the inner ear. So this is the picture of inner ear. Okay, And this collectively we call it as vestibular apparatus. So, the totally the inner ear which concerned with this dynamic and static equilibrium and this area we call it as the vestibular apparatus. So, three areas of the vestibule that is utricle, this is the utricle, then saccule and the semicircular duct. Let's say this area in the inner ear. So, like in the cochlear region. There is an outer bony labrum, so outer bony labrum, this area, which is filled with the fluid called as perilymph and the inner membranous area, this is in the blue color here, is filled with potassium rich endolymph, which is present in the vestibular region. In the vestibular region, there are two sac like areas, one up upper utricle and a lower saccule is present. So this is saccule and this is utricle and the saccule is connected to the scalar media and this is the scalar media by a duct called as ductus reunions also called as ductus reunions of Hensen and this saccule is connected to the utricle via a duct called as utriculo saccular duct. So two ducts and these are the three semicircular canals. You can anterior then a posterior and a lateral semicircular canals which are placed at right angles to each other. This outer bony labrum is called as the semicircular canal while the inner membrane is structured this blue colored area is called as the semicircular ducts. So these ducts are also connected to the uterine and this enlarged portion of this duct at the swelling region of the semicircular canals at the base is called as the ampulla. So this is the ampullary region and these receptors for these equilibriums are placed in the saccule, in the utricle as well as in the ampulla of this semicircular canal. So these are the areas where these receptors are placed. The bipolar neurons whose peripheral process is in the utricle saccule as well as in the semicircular ducts where the central process will arise out and form as an superior as well as inferior scarpus ganglion. So this is superior carpus ganglion, this is inferior scarpus ganglion and joins with the cochlear part. This green is the cochlear part while this yellow is the vestibular part and joins together as the vestibular
below cochlear nerve of the or the cranial nerve number 8 now coming to the sensory apparatus for the hearing so these are placed in the walls of ventricle as well as in the walls of sacu and this contains small thick and regions called as macula or plural is maculate and the in the sacu it is in the medial wall and in the ventricle it is in the inferior portions of the ventricle and this contains a specialized cells the macula is called as the hair cell very similar to the auditory hair cells this apical surface of the hair cells here are also have finger like projections two type of projection there is one is stereocilia there are 40 to 80 stereocilia these are microvilli like projections and with a gradual increase in height and the biggest one is the cilium big big cilia and this extends beyond the largest stereocilium so this cilium is separate so this is a cilia like one while these all are micro will i like one and this stereocilia and this cilium together we call it as hair bundle and the stereocilia are connected together by small protein attachments called as piplet so, so that's also similar to the hair cells in the auditory receptors and in the macula the midline of the macula we call it as triola so this is the midline of the ventricle as well as sacu and that area is called as triola and the placement of this hair cell is different in utricle as well as in the sac in the sacular macula the hair cells are placed such a way that this cilium so this is the biggest one the cilium are placed and it is oriented outwards okay here also left side also right side also this cilium is oriented outwards while in the utricle from the striola it is placed towards the inside so cilium are towards the mid ridge while in the sacular the cilium ciliums are placed towards the outside above the macula now let's see use this picture above the macula the hair cell there are gelatinous this area is the gelatinous glycoprotein layer and this layer is called as otolithic membrane otolithic membrane and this membrane is secreted by the supporting cells which is seen associated with the hair and this otolithic membrane has calcium carbonate crystals above and this is called as otoliths lith means stone or otoconia that is ear sand so this is around 0.5 to 10 micrometer size of calcium carbonate crystal so this contain lot of calcium carbonate otoliths okay now when our head is tilted upward or sideward okay forwards etc these otoliths will move okay these otoliths of the otolithic membrane pulled by the gravity and this slides over the hair cell so this will slides over the hair cells and this causes hair cells to bend and this bending in one direction causes depolarization so that is due to the opening of potassium channel okay opening of potassium channel causes increased cation concentration and this causes further opening up of voltage gated calcium channels and calcium will enter into the cells and this entering of calcium causes release of glutamate and an action potential will be caused in the bipolar cell this is the peripheral process of bipolar cell. and the movement in the opposite direction causes converse effect that is instead of depolarization it can cause this repolarization so this utricle and this sacral are important organs or receptors for the static equilibrium now the dynamic equilibrium is more a function of the semicircular ducts rather than that of the utricular or sacular macula so these semicircular ducts are the inner membrane is portion of the semicircular canals two vertical canals that is the anterior this one is the anterior and this one is the posterior and one horizontal that is the lateral semicircular ducts surface and in the ampulla of the semicircular canals that is this blue colored area okay there are small elevations called as crystae so singular is crista and each crista has group of hair cells and a gelatinous covering over the stereocilia and cilia of the hair cells and these all together we called as the cupula hair cells stereocilia cilia 
and above that this gelatinous covering and this we call it as cupid and the bending of the hair cells in relation to the rotational acceleration or deceleration which produces a receptor part. so actions all are similar so when our head rotates the rotational acceleration or deceleration causes movement of this cupid and this causes a receptor potential which is transferred to the bipolar cells this is the peripheral process of the bipolar cell and this will all move to the inferior as well as the superior scarpus ganglion and then which goes out as the vestibular portion of the vestibular cochlear now that is cranial nerve number 8 so the physiology is similar to that of the auditory hair cells that is opening of potassium channels glutamate release and action potential so that is similar now let's see the pathway of equilibrium equilibrium pathway the vestibular part of the vestibular cochlear nerve the superior as well as the inferior scopus ganglion enters the brain through the same auditory meters together with the cochlear portion and this now will synapse in the vestibular nucleus so it's a big nuclei vestibular nuclei which is in the medulla as well as in the pons region and this is a cluster of nuclei it's a major integrating center for equilibrium and this nuclei has inputs from eyes that is somatic receptors then from neck muscles after that remaining will go to the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar pedunc cerebellum we know it's a center of equilibrium as well as this balance and there is a reciprocal connections to the vestibular nuclei from the cerebellum also there is connection to cerebellum from the cerebellum to the vestibular nuclei and the vestibular nuclei as we said it's an integrating center it's get information from the ocular motor nerve toclear nerve abduction nerve so these are all which controls the eye movement another nerve for the vestibular spinal tract which conveys to the spinal cord to the gravity muscles as well as to the joints the proprioceptors in the joints etc so these are all for integration of this equilibrium and from this nuclei vestibular nuclei this conveys to the ventral posterior nuclei of the thalamus and from this thalamus it goes to the areas number 1, 2, 3 that is 1, 2, 3 of the vestibular area. So this is the primary vestibular area in the brain that is in the parietal lobe. Okay, so this is the equilibrium path. So this is about the physiology of equilibrium and equilibrium path. So we are not going into detail of the vestibular ocular reflex, the VCR or vestibular spinal reflex, VSRX. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching.